here from the Gator Nation Football Podcast, back with a film breakdown of Florida's offense versus Vanderbilt's defense in the homecoming game. As always, if you like this content, subscribe to the channel, like the video, follow us on social media, drop us a dono on Patreon, and check out the podcast each and every Monday where we bring you in-depth analysis on the Florida Gators. This game was a sloppy one. However, as always, each week, there's plenty of things to look at on film to see where individual players can improve, what the play calls look like, and what the future may hold based upon the performances that I'm seeing each and every week. Let's start by looking at Florida first and 10. Not the first play of the game, but first and 10 for Florida. Vanderbilt did a few things differently here given how Florida tends not to want to run actual RPOs, as we've talked about. They would rather just have a zone read. And you're going to see in a 3-4 defense here from Vanderbilt, here's your four linebackers, that the strong side linebacker doesn't care at all about stopping the pass on this particular play. He's going to completely collapse in on the fake. Now, if you want to run an RPO here, you can easily make this a ball fake, have a receiver here. You can run a go-to-clear and just hit this. Imagine that happening. You can just hit that, and there's a lot of space there and there. Florida does not do that often. They tend to prefer a more uh, old-school, if you will, version of a zone read where you don't have a lot of RPO action. It's really just going to be a run-based zone read. And because Vanderbilt's going to wind up employing this aggressive strategy here on the 3-4 defense, they're going to actually choose to shoot the B-gap instead. He's going to try to get pressure in the B-gap, and then you're going to have the strong side linebacker filling and waiting in case Emery keeps it. And then you're going to have Vanderbilt's uh, one of their middle linebackers or interior linebackers here in this case. And he is going to also fill. So you're getting a double B or an AB gap fill here waiting. And you can see no matter what Florida is doing on the offensive line, they do not account for the linebacker here. He can't get there. Here's Tarquin coming across because they shot the B gap here first. Now, he's going to get taken out of the play, obviously, by design because he's the edge defender. Uh, but because they shoot those gaps correctly, they're going to be aggressive. There's your B-gap shot. There is your A-gap shot. And you're going to have, essentially, Vanderbilt waiting for Pierce. Now, again, you can only line up on defense and do this if you don't have a fear that Florida is going to punish you consistently out here. Vandy's playing entirely run here, all eyes in the backfield, as we saw with Kentucky, all eyes in the backfield, similar strategy here. And again, you're trying to slow down Florida's run game. This is largely why it's Florida, uh, harder, or not Florida, harder for Florida to run in these games is because teams are selling out to stop the run. They're shooting the most likely gaps pre-snap. They're basically just taking an educated guess on where Florida wants to go. And of course, if they guess correctly, they're going to wind up having an advantage, especially if Florida does not want to punish them in the past game. Now, Florida took a lot of shots vertically in this game, and the major reason for that was how Vanderbilt's playing, as you see it right here, very aggressively against the run. All right, so we saw what Vanderbilt did on first down. Now on second down, Florida says, well, if you want to play with seven defenders in the box that are going to be selling out on the run every single time, we know on your back end you're going to be weak. And in fact, Vanderbilt's essentially going to wind up playing man defense. They are going to have a robber that's going to drop back in here. Uh, however, pay attention to the fact that Florida knows on the perimeter they have man-to-man -man defense. This safety is going to stay in this area of the field, and they are then going to work with Whittemore and out and up route. Of course, he's going to win this matchup against the safety. It's exactly what you want. There it is. He's out of there. This ball is, as we know from Emory, I'm not going to beat a dead horse on this particular episode. I'm going to try to show you things we've learned on these videos as we go through. If you want to see what I think of Emory's progression, you can kind of watch each video and get an idea. Uh, this is a completion, of course, we'll take it, and this is an extended hitch route. We like to say that Emory throws every route as a hitch route. If this ball is placed out here, it's a touchdown to Whittemore. Instead, Whittemore is going to turn all the way around. There's a nice long hitch, about a 30-yard hitch route on the sideline. And again, of course, you'll take this completion. Uh, you'll take this. We're happy with that. But if you're looking and you're Emory Jones and you want to improve, your ball placement has to improve. you got a super clean pocket here. This ball placement has got to be out in front of Whittemore. He's two to three yards ahead. These should be touchdowns, not completions where he goes out of bounds. Again, we'll take this. Nice gain. Nice play call. Recognizing Vanderbilt selling out for the run. Uh, but you want to see that ball placement be better. Florida working out of the bunch set here. They're going to run a really nice route combination that's going to spring both Whittemore and Shorter. Shorter's going to wind up running uh, a corner route. 
really running in front of the safety over top of the dropper who's going to wind up sitting underneath. And then Whittemore is just going to run a seam go route. Uh, both of them are open shorters, the most open player here. The first read for Emery is Whittemore. He does have Whittemore, but ball placement is going to let him down on this play. Of course, on the TV feed, you're just going to see them run off your screen. You have no idea really where shorter is. Uh, here is shorter. If you're able to see this on the all 22, as shorter makes his break to the corner here, the safety and the underneath defender was here. Shorter had just absolutely acres of space. So he was the best choice. This safety was turned around, and he's here now. Uh, but Whittemore is also a fine choice in this. Against Emery's first read, Whittemore is a fine choice, but the ball has got to be thrown here. Out in front of Whittemore, he's running an inside leveraged go route. So this ball has got to come over this shoulder. He's got the defender on his back right where he wants him. You do not want to throw this ball across Whittemore's essential helmet which is what happens, that's going to have him lose the leverage on the route that he gained. And that's what you see. This ball actually essentially flies too deep and it flies over on this angle when you really want that ball to be landing here on the R where Whittemore can use his leverage to catch this football. And that ball should be a touchdown either to Shorter or to Whittemore. Again, either one of them can work. Uh, Whittemore is the first read. He had what he wants here. You're going to see the release. Defender playing right now trying to maintain inside leverage, as we see here. Whittemore is going to beat this right there. There you go. This is what I want. That's the angle. He now has this window, right? Trail defender. This ball just needs to be thrown to this side of his body. Whittemore is going to shield him off. Easy touchdown pass. No safety over the top to stop this. And we're going to watch as Whittemore runs his route. He just keeps running vertically and high rather than here, where you want this ball to be placed if the ball is placed there. It is a easy touchdown, nothing that a defender can do. Instead, the ball's well overthrown, and it's also thrown too far this way. So good play call from Dan Mullen. Two receivers open for touchdowns. You have to have, obviously, good ball placement there. Even if you have a good pocket, you have to deliver the ball where you need it to be, obviously, if you want to score touchdowns on a good play call. Second and 10 for Florida. Vandy's linebackers did a nice job all game long of filling the gaps. Uh, that's one of the reasons why they were... Not successful, obviously, on defense. Florida was able to score quite a bit of points on them. But as far as Vanderbilt goes, they did fill the right gaps. This is an example where Florida hurt them badly, but they actually took away the gap that Florida wanted. We're going to see the linebacker come here and really fill the off-tackle gap or the C-gap here where Naquan wants to go. Gamble's coming across the formation to get your block here. Ethan White is pulled to get your block here. And you're going to see him crop right in here. There he is. And instead of Naquan filling this space... He's got a really nice seal here in the A-gap or the middle, and he's going to just take it. There he goes. Squeezes through that. Nice job by the O-line, creating two gaps on this play. And then he's going to make a man miss. Then he's off to the races. And he takes a play where the initial gap was actually filled and turns it into a big play. And that's, that's nice work there by Naquan. Almost a touchdown as he runs down the side. Let's take a look at this in real speed here one time. Here we go. There's Ethan White. There's Gamble. We're going to pull across the formation here. There it is. That's what I wanted. Makes a man miss. Gets outside. Of course, he did rush for more than 100 yards in this game. Had a really nice game. Florida can, can really hurt you with a variety of running backs. All of them run very well, either between the tackles or to the outside. They all have some different skill sets and traits. But a nice job here by Naquan making a guy miss, choosing the secondary hole, and turning this run into a big game. We talked earlier about Florida running an RPO. If a team like Vanderbilt wanted to always have seven players that were really exclusively playing run, and on this play, this is not an RPO. This is really a play-action pass, but it's going to function much in the same way. All of Vanderbilt's linebackers are coming in thinking run, and that's going to allow Emory to just simply fake the handoff, and then we're going to have Rick Wells running completely wide open here because Vanderbilt was giving that to Florida. They were content to see if Florida wanted to hit this. And in this case, Emory Jones, who likes to throw on the run, typically does throw better on the run. However, as we've said before on this broadcast, in this situation as a quarterback, when you are rolling out to the right and you have any amount of time, you really want to set your feet. The fundamentals here are to set your feet and make this throw. And the reason for that is you don't want to be doing this. He mails this ball past Rick Wells. And unfortunately, what should be a touchdown or at least a gain down to the 10-yard line becomes an incomplete pass. And this is the risk. This is the risk no matter who you are or what age you're playing. If you're playing quarterback and you're rolling out to the right, when you have a second here, set your feet, set, set, 
and drive down this throw. You're going to be far more accurate than running not only across the field, but also even backwards a little bit and finishing backwards as we've seen Emory do consistently on each and every film breakdown. That's going to lead to an off-target throw just too far. And even if he makes a diving catch here, you're really frustrated because obviously when you get a guy this wide open, you want to hit this play. This is an easy throw. Make this in your sleep. Sometimes you're going to miss wide open guys no matter who you are. It happens to everyone. But the you know the worse your fundamentals are, the worse your footwork is, the worse your activity is here in the pocket, the worse your result's going to be. Again, technique is everything as a quarterback, especially your footwork. And if you do that, you make these risks here. And this is what happens to Florida. Rick Wells misses out on a big opportunity on an easy completion, potentially a touchdown early in the game. Second and 10 for Florida. You're going to get some great camera work here from the SEC Network. There we go. Now we can see the play. Uh, Vanderbilt was not using a single high safety in cover three or cover one. They were really keeping him down low, especially early in the game, trying to stop these intermediate routes that Florida might want to throw. They were daring Florida to throw over the top, which you saw Florida do a lot early. In this particular case, we're going to have a post route coming from Jaquavion Frazier's. That's an excellent route, especially when, although you can't see it, the Vanderbilt DB started with Frazier's down here, and he was already playing outside technique. Now, if you've watched this channel for any time, uh, you know that I would much prefer to have him play inside technique here as a defender, inside leverage. That way he forces the receiver to the sideline and does not essentially give him what he has right now, which is leverage to the inside of the field where Emery can put this ball anywhere he wants and allow Frazier's to run into it. Emery is going to do something similar to what he did in the Whittemore throw where he's really going to put this ball too far this way and that's not going to allow Frazier's to use all of the leverage he's created to catch the ball somewhere over here but deeper on the field off your screen. We are going to get a pass interference call here, but either way, nice call from Florida. This is a good play call. Should result in a big play. Nice pass protection here up front. Over here, Vanderbilt just letting you know, hey, we're going to play safe. We really don't want to get beat. If you want to throw these hitch routes, you can too. So Florida had those open as well. But why not go over the top when they're daring you to do so? Frazier's wins this battle, just like we saw with Whittemore. This is perfect trail technique. Um, perfect meaning that the receiver has the corner and trail and the corner has no leverage on this throw. Just put the ball out here anywhere where he can continue on this plane so that he can maintain the spatial relationship so that the Vanderbilt defender cannot make a play on the ball. Instead, you're going to see his angle change right there. The reason this, this separation closed down is not because Frazier slowed down. It's because he's adjusting to the ball that is now coming this way. And there he goes. You can see this ball ends up here. It should be here. If the ball's over here, he's catching it and scoring. Instead, the ball is put to, take a look there, he's held, which is nice, pass interference. But the only reason this ball, this play can even be made here by the Vanderbilt DB is because this ball is thrown too far this way. So nice call by Dan Mullen. Uh, again, Emory Jones, just something he struggles with. Ball placement is not there at the level you want to see it, especially when you're getting receivers this wide open with so much feel to throw the football to. This is not a tight window. It's an empty window. He essentially is throwing the ball into a barn of a window. Just make sure you put it on the right side of the barn here so your receiver can go get it. You can put a lot of air underneath it. There is no defender that could come get it. Uh, these are the easiest of vertical throws, but right now Florida having a hard time hitting them. Third and two, a couple of times in this game, Emory Jones is going to want to keep the ball rather than hand it off on the zone read. This is definitely one of them. Third and two, let's freeze it right here. Emory's read is going to be this defensive end who's already collapsed under a double block from Florida's right side with Stuart Reese and DeLance. This is gone. The linebacker here is already off and inside. He should keep this ball and come out here. He's going to elect to hand it off instead. There's your handoff. Imagine he had now kept it. You've got this defender who's going to have to basically turn his momentum this way. Uh, this does not happen. Does not happen. So instead, Florida's going to live with the inside, the inside run here, which Vanderbilt was counting on stopping. And that third and two by Naquan Wright is going to wind up becoming a fourth and short. Fourth and one. This is a great play design from Florida. Uh, this does also show you what Emory wants to do. First and foremost, if you're a throwing quarterback here, you're definitely throwing this one. If you prefer running, you're going to run it and really get the first down as the goal. Uh, optimally, you've got a lot of good things going on here. So we've got a flat release from Xavier Henderson. 
We have Jaquavion uh, Frazier's running a corner route where he'll be open. And then you have Kamori Gamble running a post route where he is also open. So we're going to stop right here. Everyone is open. Emery right now is wide open in the backfield. Set your feet. You can take this safe, easy throw. You can take this throw to Frazier's. Or you can take the touchdown throw if you want here to Gamble, who's going to be wide open. You can see him. Here goes the hand. Hand goes up. I got a lot of space. Look at me, Emery. I'm open. Hit me. Frazier's eyes back on there. He's running a long hitch route. I'm comfortable. Hit me. And of course, you have Henderson. I'm also open. Let's hit me. Instead, Emery, he doesn't want to throw that ball. He's going to run. And again, he's going to get this. He's going to gain a lot of yards. I don't have a problem with that. I think that if you're a throwing quarterback, you're definitely taking a look at throwing this. I like the play call, especially because in the future, if teams want to sell out this hard for the run, uh, you'd want to have, no matter who's playing quarterback for Florida, you'd like to have them have the ability to occasionally make one of these throws to prove to teams that, hey, we can do this, which will then essentially slow down their rushing attack, their rushing attack being the defensive the defensive team's commitment to stop Florida's rushing attack or their ability to fly into the backfield in every single play. This will slow them down. As it stands against Vanderbilt, Emery is able to take this play and take it for many more yards than he would against a team that is better defensively. But either way, it does kind of illustrate what's in the mind of the quarterback. What is his preference? What does he want to do first? If everything is open, what is he choosing to do? And again, I don't have a problem there. With running on fourth and one, your primary goal is to convert the first down. Emery's a better runner than a passer. He should really be running there. If I'm coaching Emery, I'm also probably wanting him to run there based upon his skill set. So it's a good conversion from Florida on fourth and one. Nice play design. All right, second and goal, you be the play caller. If you know that Vanderbilt is selling out to stop the run, what's a nice play design? Let's just fake like we're going to run this zone read again. Have Frazier's block here and then just release for a very easy touchdown. A classic red zone play works all the time. If you execute the fake well enough and the team really doesn't think you're going to pass, that's a nice safe hitch route again. Not really technically a hitch route, but a hitch route for Emory Jones to complete on second and goal and a touchdown for Florida. Well executed, nice play. Frazier's getting more and more playing time now as each of these weeks go on. Yours truly has been begging on every one of these film reviews to see more AR-15 in the game so we can take a look and see what he can actually do for Florida, especially passing the football. Sadly, Vanderbilt did not really give us any more of a sample size than we had. He hardly threw the ball, and on this particular first play, things are going to go tragically wrong. He should have simply taken the sack here on first and 10 and not forced this. This entire play is a little bit confusing. Florida's going to run play action. I have to imagine that what they're really trying to hit here is zipper. He's going to sneak out. Why I'm going to be confused is what you'll see in a second. So zipper is sneaking out. Here's AR. He moves over, sets himself correctly. He does this well. He's in a perfect throwing position. There's really no one to throw the football to yet. Now Copeland's going to be the, the player he should have targeted. That's not going to happen. He's looking at zipper. He's waiting for him to clear this. However, we have some interesting stuff going on here. You have Pierce who just faked sort of the handoff who kind of ends up just standing over here. And then you're going to see Zipper come over there. And this is not a this is not great, right? Here's Pierce. That wasn't Pierce. Sorry, this is Pierce. Here's Pierce. Here comes Zipper. That's where Richardson's looking. This defender has been looking at him. He has pressure right on him. Early pressure. Even if he were able to throw this ball to Copeland, and again, you can't see this well, but on the All-22 camera... You can see that this look, when Copeland comes open right here, this defender is looking at him, right? When Copeland comes open right here, this defender is about to be right in that throw window and he's getting collapsed on. So the perfect throw from Richardson would have been to be reading the empty space here and right now firing this pass, right? And I think one day he'll get to that point. He's not there yet. Instead, he's waiting for this to clear. What he should be doing is saying, I have one and two guys coming on me. It's time for me to just get out of here on first and 10. Just run for it and, and take, my, take my loss here. Live for second down. Uh, he should not throw this particular pass. Instead, he's going to really just blindly throw one here. There is nothing here. I mean, this is just not here, right? This is, this is not happening. It's not here. Nothing good is happening here. I have to imagine the spacing from Pierce and Zipper is definitely off. There's no way Florida would ever want this to happen in this situation. That's just not good. Pierce is going to bring his defender in here anyway. Um, something goes wrong with the entire execution of this play. But when you're the quarterback, you must take it upon yourself to make the best and right decision. That is the number one job of a quarterback. Do not turn the ball over. Make good decisions. He does not make a good decision here. 
turns into an interception for Florida. Now, after the game, Dan Mullen had said that Anthony Richardson needs to learn to manage a game. That felt a bit harsh to me. He got four snaps in the first half and a bunch of insignificant snaps in the fourth quarter where he handed the ball off every single time. This was a bad decision by him for sure. Really the only true bad decision he's made thus far in his very limited sample size at Florida this season. Uh, and the second drive, as we're going to look at here, goes a bit differently. Not really sure the context of those comments or what that even means, given that, yes, this is a bad decision. But if you give a guy four plays, and as we're going to see in a second, he converts a first down, then due to a holding call, then he does something really smart on that play. Just not sure about those comments. That's a very interesting look. Some of the, some of the stuff Dan Mullen does with handling his quarterbacks has befuddled me since he's been here. Whether it was Franks or Trask, or now it's Emery and Richardson, oftentimes he seems to minimize the more talented technique passer, Trask, and now potentially Richardson, in favor of the guy who's the guy right now, first Franks and now Emery. It's sort of like they get an unlimited basket of mistakes they can make and they get praised. And the guy who either people like or some people think of a higher ceiling tends to constantly get the harsher critique. Interesting stuff. Either way, we'll look at this next set of plays from Anthony Richardson so you can choose what you think for yourself because that's the point of film. Look at the play. Decide what happens. In my opinion on this one, Anthony Richardson doesn't have a lot of great options here. He needs to eat this though, right? He gets free right away. Florida's going to allow two. This one's going to break loose. This is a designed delayed blitz. They're putting pressure on him. He has Copeland here. Play design though is for Zipperer. As he matures, you'd like to see him quickly recognize that's not happening. Let me come to my crosser and hit this. And again, I think he'll get there. Good thing here, though, is that's great posture. He moved the pocket, set his feet, ball's in a great spot, ready to throw. That looks nice. Make a better decision. Some more great camera work here from the SEC Network as we're going to see the ball already being snapped and Richardson already throwing it to you. What I would like to show you is that Richardson right here catches the snap almost immediately and executes this play actually very well. It's, it's a little thing that you'll notice on film, but quarterbacks that are good at these kind of plays, Tom Brady, for example, in the NFL, are going to get the ball in and out of their hands extremely quickly. That's going to help set up the screen. Florida's two on two right here. They're going to set a block. Ideally, they'd want shorter running to the outside on this play. There'd be much more room for them to take that there. Um, regardless, regardless, nice quick delivery from Richardson. Simple pass. We're not going to go too crazy about it, but it was quick. It gets the shorter on time. Again, ideally, shorter's hitting the outside path here. Not the inside one where the defender can get him. Florida doesn't quite get that right there. A little hesitation, but he does squeeze through and he picks up nine yards. Again, keep in mind Dan Mullen's comments about Richardson not managing the game well. And you tell me what you think. This is the second pass of the game. First one's a pick. That's a completion. Let's look at the next one. Second and one, Vanderbilt again keeping a linebacker or sometimes a nickel that's going to be way out of position for anything Florida does out wide. An easy chance to run a screen, which is exactly what Florida is going to do. Richardson catches the ball, play fake, ball out immediately. One more time, look. In the hands, fake, out immediately. Quality ball. We'd like to see a little more here, but ball's out quick. Coppola now just needs to get forward, right? Let's go here or let's go here. It's second and one. Let's get forward and take the first down. He's going to stop here. Whittemore does get beat on this. Let's give credit where credit's due for Vandy. He's going to push Whittemore back. Take a look at this. Whittemore's going to get driven back here all the way to the 30-yard line. However, again, if you're Copeland, you're catching this ball, and you're either going here or you're going here, right? Let's take some yards. He's going to get here. He's going to get stuck. He's going to make matters worse right here. Now is when you just sort of just go. Just dive forward. Just get there. He's going to make matters worse. He wants a home run. He's juking. Now he's going backwards. Now he's getting driven back. And Florida's going to take a loss on this play. So, again, Richardson, ball goes out, hits his target. They wind up getting an unfortunate result. That's second down for him. So, two completions, one interception. Let's see what happens on third down. Third and two, which I'm not going to show you. Florida converts the first down. Richardson runs a QB, um, a QB run for the first down. But there's a holding penalty, so it comes back. That's not Richardson's fault. I'm not sure how he's managing the game incorrectly there. Now it's third down and seven, and let's see what Vanderbilt elects to do, and let's see what Richardson should do. Again, not every failed third down conversion is the same. So Vanderbilt is going to bring pressure. Let's see how many people Vanderbilt brings. I want you to count pre-snap, but we have here. Ready? We have one, two, 
three, and four defenders. You know what you don't see? A safety. So Vanderbilt's going to play cover zero, and on top of cover zero, they are going to bring everybody. Everybody. So we have seven defenders coming. Seven defenders coming. It's cover zero. Cover zero is something that Richardson, I think, will be great at beating. Dan Mullen, of course, runs plenty of good cover zero plays when it's coming. Any simple drag route, cross route, a mesh route here from this side, a million different little things that you can do with Florida speed advantage would be what you want. Instead, Richardson is going to do what he wants to do, take the snap. He's going to drop back because Florida is running vertical routes right now, right into the face of a pressure cover zero. Back foot hits. He's climbing. He wants to hit his hitch route coming back over here. He's ready to throw the ball. We have pressure. The hitch route hasn't even turned yet. Again, you cannot see this on your camera, but right now there is not a single Florida receiver registering to throw the ball to. Not one. No one is ready for the route. No one is done with their route. Nobody's open. He now has someone in his face and someone else about to get him. Again, you are Richardson. What are you supposed to do here? You have no place to go with this football. What does he do? He climbs the pocket, which is good. His eyes are still downfield. He's climbing the pocket. And now he should just take the sack. It's third and seven. You're not going to convert this. Sacks do not matter in this case. Instead, he's going to try to be a hero and not take a sack, which he does. He throws an incomplete pass. Here's Copeland, who he wanted to throw the ball to on the hitch of the comeback. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know what about that is bad management of the game. Again, you should say, hey, Richardson, just take the sack. It's third and seven. Get some awareness. He winds up throwing an incomplete pass. He's a redshirt freshman. You're running vertical routes into the face of a cover zero. I mean, you could have run anything else here, and he's going to put his back foot on the ground right now and make a pass, right? Imagine Whittemore runs this route. Imagine you even have him in a quick hitch here. Imagine a mesh route. Imagine a slant route. I can imagine a million combinations. So can Dan Mullen. I don't know how I critique my quarterback here if I'm going to give him a play call with all deep routes in the face of a full seven-man pressure with cover zero. Instead, I'd say to my quarterback, hey, you know what? We had the wrong play call on there. Great job. Way to keep your eyes downfield. Way to climb. Way to not turn the ball over. Next time, just eat the sack. It's third and seven. I don't need you to throw any complete pass there. You just take the sack. Protect the football. At all times, protect the football. But that's the only critique you have on that play. So doesn't add up to me. It doesn't make a lot of sense. The comments that I heard post game. I'm not an Anthony Richardson apologist. Again, my job is to come on film here and just look at what I see. But if you look at that, you tell me what you see. Uh, to me, again, you're coaching the quarterback. Mainly positives there, minus the fact that it's third and seven. Just take the set. Emory Jones back in the game, second and 11 for Florida. Emory Jones here is going to have two main options that he could have thrown the ball to. I'm going to tell you what he looks at here in a second, but he has a deep comeback route here. And then he's going to have a, just a little sort of a wheel go route where you're, you're going to want to hit him here in between the corner and the safety. And this ball's available and this ball's available. Florida's going to get nice protection. Guraj did not play. Instead, you had Tarquin here, who I thought did well. We're not highlighting him a lot in this game, but I thought he actually did very well. Very competent pass protector and blocker there. He's not the level of Garage right now, but he did a nice job in this football game as he tends to continually do. A consistent player for Florida. So there's our play action, and now we're going to look. Vandy way off the ball. Right away, Emery's looking to the right. We've talked about this a lot. I think it's just one of Emery's habits. He's going to look away from where he wants to go first, which is a good quarterbacking habit. It's an even better habit if you're actually looking for a quick piece of grass. See all this grass right here? A lot of grass right here. You can actually have your first look say, okay, Vanderbilt is not playing a single high safety, which is true. They are not. Based upon the look they have here, they're going to wind up sitting with three deep defenders, which they have, and one underneath defender. So it's perfectly reasonable to take your look at the route that flows right in here. That's why I have a quick turn here from Frazier's and see all the grass and just hit it. Let's take that and carry on at second and 11. Instead, he's really doesn't, he's not, it's not really what he wants. Again, he's looking right at it. It's right there. It's an easy ball. It's not really what he wants the whole time. He really wants to come to this throw. And this throw is going to be a corner post route, which is being sat on here by Vanderbilt's defender. It's fine to want to look at that, but pre-snap, your plus play quarterback again, pre-snap, the corner post work route can still work even if a defender is this far off, right? That can still work. It's not going to work because he's not going at all for this motion here. Now, Emery can't see this yet. He's just going to come back to this and hope that's what he has. 
Uh, Vanderbilt, of course, was letting Florida defenders run past offensive players, receivers in this case, sorry, run past them at will all game long. There's no reason not to think that you may still get this situation here. But again, just take this. This is all day. You take this every single day that's there. Uh, that's not a real look. It just kind of confirms something we've talked about here on film. He's not actually looking there. He's really just waiting to come to his look. And now he's going to wait. Again, timing's off. He's waiting. He's bouncing. He's bouncing. He's waiting. Now, for sure, at this point in time, you have to know you want to take your deep comeback. He's opened up his hips. His body is facing away. This comeback is here. Climb the pocket and drill this comeback. It's a tough throw. It's all the way across from the right hash. Right on the edge of your screen here, there's your comeback. Ball should now be out. Let's take this. Let's convert this second and 11. We have great protection. We have a phenomenal pocket right here. Let's make this happen. But instead, Emery really says, okay, my home run shot's not there. I'm just going to run. And it's going to wind up picking up a very small gain. We're not going to beat a dead horse here. I don't want to come on film review each and every week and say, hey, look, Emery doesn't do these things well. It's just to continue a look since Gator Nation tends to be divided on what a quarterback skills aren't or are or are not. Here's another look on camera of what you see. This is what you want to see out of your quarterback. I'm not going to play it again. You've already seen it. But at this point in time, um, you know, you want to see, again, better throws. Let the ball fly. Trust what your eyes see. Put the ball where it needs to go. When you get a pocket like this, let's complete these passes. I'm not trying to ride Emery too hard. If this was AR-15 or if it was Kyle Trask. I'd say the same thing. If it was a film review on Tom Brady, I'd say the same thing, right? You have to wind up cleaning up these quarterbacking skills because you need to be able to complete passes into windows that are this big. Otherwise, what does it tell us when we analyze the film? There's almost no chance that Florida can consistently pass against an elite team if they don't have a bunch of wrinkles, which they clearly had against an Alabama team that is weaker than most people thought. But even then, without wrinkles, if you have to pass, you need to be able to complete passes, especially with windows this big, no matter who is playing quarterback for Florida. Third and nine for Florida. Vanderbilt, again, playing just super aggressive on defense. It's very rare that you're going to see no safety in the middle of the field in major college football for so many plays, but we're showing you a bunch of them here. They're doing that again because they just didn't think Florida could consistently pass. And given the fact that they could not generate a pass rush without pressuring, they figured, let's die on the hill pressuring. They're going to get a nice pressure right here through the B graph. Nobody on him. Emery wants to hit this slant route on third and nine. The rest of these routes really aren't routes. We have a block, a block, a block. We're setting up a little kind of wheel flare. This is all fake. This is going to be a screen route entirely. I mean, a slant route right here the whole way. Vanderbilt's sitting on it. Most importantly, defender right in his face. Ball's going to get thrown behind Xavier Henderson. Not a lot Emery can do. Why do I show you this play? Because this is what happens when you're limited in the passing game. On third down and nine, you're essentially going to send five receivers out where four of them are absolutely worthless. And you're limiting yourself to a one-on-one -on -one opportunity as the season goes on. Teams get film on that and say, rather than drop this linebacker into coverage, let's just send more than you can block and trust that we're going to get in this passing lane. So we're going to put pressure on you in the passing lane you want. And if you run a slant, which is likely, we are going to be sitting on that route. So basically beat us with something other than what you want to do most frequently. Vanderbilt does a nice job here on this third and nine to accurately guess what Florida wants to do, and they get the stop. All right, first and 10. So if you're Florida, you say, look, if Vanderbilt wants to continually give me the entire middle of the field, I have to find a way to get the football in here, right? I have to find a way to get this football. This is the worst drawing ever. I should just punt on this. There we go. Come on, come on, stop, stop harassing me. There we go. All right. To get the football in this area, the ball has got to get in here. Well, a good way to do that is to use the running backs. Pretend like you're playing Georgia. Because look, we know that these guys are all playing the run. They're selling out. They're just coming in as hard as they can. Don't run the football. Do something else. Great. Let's make this really easy. We're going to fake like we're running the football. The old Tim Tebow fake, the cell fake. We're going to get all the linebackers up here. We're going to blow right past you. There it is. There's Naquan. He's gone. He's out of there. It's a touchdown. Except it's a hitch route. Not great when you're moonwalking, right, this way to catch a ball coming from your quarterback. So you're turning around, turn around, turn around, and then you're moonwalking. There he is. Doop, doop, doop. Now he's got to turn himself all the way back around because he's catching a hitch route. It's a halfback middle route, you say. 
you say, wait, James, that's a halfback middle route. And I say, no, 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 that is a halfback hitch route. Not common, but there it is. Hitch complete. Rather than having a touchdown here, we're going to gain a lot of yards. Nice game by Naquan Wright. Way to put it all the way down there. But again, ball placement from memory. It is what it is. He's just not comfortable putting the ball out in front of people. He wants to throw it safely. He wants to throw it to their numbers, to their face mask. Does it there again. Florida gets a big gain out of it, but should have been a touchdown for Naquan. Third and goal. Florida's going to run a classic combination here in the red zone that is used by teams really across the country. You get double hitches with a corner route. This is extremely well defended by Vanderbilt. He does a phenomenal job. Really probably one of the best pass coverage plays by Vanderbilt in the entire game, except Emery is going to hit him with a fadeaway. Here's your boy, Emery. A fadeaway, lean back, open the chest, dime. Look, that's a phenomenal pass, right? I can critique all I want the fact that this is done with maybe the worst possible technique. I mean, this technique right here by Emery is not at all what you would ever want to see. He's not does not getting established. He wants to roll left. The players are I'm going to take the snap, roll left, flip the hips, set your feet, throw the football. That's the goal. Flip the hips, set your feet, throw the football. Emery's going to roll left. He's going to open up, backpedal, backpedal, fade away, dime. Look, the result's unbelievable. The result is unbelievable on this film study, of course. We'll take that, and we will celebrate that. Great pass for Emery. He's a college football quarterback. That's fantastic. I don't care how you throw it. That's great. But if you want to throw 30 more of those in your time, you want to clean up the technique because the odds that you throw a pass like this consistently are much smaller than if you do it with the right technique. Emery is essentially increasing his standard deviation for the accuracy of his throws by throwing off platform, fading away backwards, not setting his feet, not driving down it. But that's a great throw. Great throw. Great touchdown for Florida. Nice work by Whittemore. Great defense by Vanderbilt. It's just a good football play. All the way around, Florida goes up 21-0. Second half action now. Florida struggled at times to control the A-gap. Struggled. Uh, linebackers for Vanderbilt were frequently able to get in there. And a lot of it resulted from Florida's offensive line not getting off a combo block. So here you have Delance and you have Reese. They're both going to block right here. And then Reese needs to get off of this block to secure the A-gap so the linebacker cannot come through. Now, it's tough to see from this angle, but he can't quite get there. You're going to see his helmet try. He tries right there. If you're looking from the all-22 end zone camera, you can see that his arm is out. You can see he was trying to get himself in that gap. If he gets himself in the gap, then Florida actually has a play on here where Naquan Wright can take this ball into the C-gap or even outside here and wide instead this play is going to get blown up with their linebacker zero coming right through the a gap and making a stop on naquan again vanderbilt did have success in this game doing that florida had not been nearly as vulnerable doing it of course few teams had been as reckless pressuring the run as vanderbilt was basically just cannonballing their linebackers through the a and b gaps all game long um, playing very aggressively with linebackers or nickels here as well as we mentioned and so that was a big reason why they did have success at times and also a big reason why Emory had so many touchdown passes on very easy um, and, you know, completions to wide open receivers for the most part. If you're going to play this way, there's benefits. This is what you saw here. That's tough for Florida's offensive line to deal with that kind of pressure. It's also good for them on film to obviously take a look at these things and see where they really struggled to get off this faster to seal up this gap here in Florida's zone blocking scheme. Third and four, Florida's going to run a double mesh concept here. Whittemore's going to go over top. Copeland's going to come in between. Emory's going to look for Copeland, but Justin Shorter is going to be wide open. Now, Florida's receivers are certainly struggling this year to catch as many passes as they would be, as any receiver does if the quarterback's not getting the ball out on time. Shorter's defender is actually going to essentially fall down. Emory's going to roll to the right, and you're going to see it on your screen at the very bottom and he's gone. So what you can't see right now is a shorter runs this route right here. And then he snaps him off to the inside and he's gone. He's out of the play. He's gone. He's wide open. He puts his arm up. Not going to matter. Emery's going to roll out to the right because Emery, again, he's looking. Look, take a look where he's looking. He's looking at shorter. 
but he's not really looking at shorter. He's just going to put his head there because he knows he wants to come to the mesh route. Again, this is not a problem as a quarterback, but typically the reason you want to look one way and go the other way is because you're looking off a middle safety, and normally you actually want to look at the safety and then perhaps move your eyes somewhere else. Or if you know you want to throw a go route and you know you have a single high safety and you're in man, then you can just take the snap and look here for like a good second, second and a half, and then snap around and hit whatever route you have. But in this particular play here on third and four, he actually should read this route first and then come to the mesh route. We've talked about this before. He leaves his initial route too quickly. The mesh route window is not even going to be open yet. If he just sticks with this for another second here, he's not going to lose his mesh route. Instead, he's really going to look just to the right. That's just a look for kicks. And then there's a pump fake because he actually wants to hit this pass. That's what he wants, right? So he's going to look at shorter, and then really he's just looking at shorter to see if he has space to throw this really simple flat route. He doesn't like it. So now he's going to come around to his mesh route, and he's going to find Copeland. And Copeland is right here. You can see his hand. And he's going to throw a pass that really shouldn't be thrown. This actually looks better if you see from the All-22 angle on film. He missed his opportunity, but at this stage, he actually tries to throw the ball to the back shoulder of Copeland, which is where the ball needs to be. That's good ball placement on third and four if you're stuck in this situation. He is still running. He's square to the field. None of that's what you want. Ball placement's good in that situation. Incomplete pass, not a first down. So again, pre-snap readout here one more time. You know you have a mesh route. You really know that these two guys here are just blocking for your Copeland mesh. You have a flat route, and then you have shorter. So the easy read sequence here, if we're going to do this, if we're going to do this the way we want to, is you're going to wind up reading shorter. You can read your check down, and then you can come to your measure. So let's watch the play accordingly. Here, here's what would happen. Let's watch shorter, shorter, shorter. He's beat. He's gone. He knows it. Again, he has no pressure. Right now, if he had just stuck on shorter, he has no pressure. He has no pressure. He sees shorter, balls out the shorter right? Let's say Shorter's covered. Now he would stay still. Feet are calm. He would check his check down. If that's not there, feet are calm. Flip the hips. Check your measure, right? That's how that play is going to go. Obviously, you could also go you could also go vertical, shorter, measure, check down, but typically you want to have one easy eye scan where you have a high, low read and then a crosser. Different ways to do it. Either way, Emery's sort of just going to know, I really only want to go to my flat route here. That's the route I'm really looking for. Yeah, I don't like it. I want to run. He's coming down to me. I don't love that either. Okay, there's my crosser. And you can kind of see that in real time. That's kind of what the processing looks like for Emery right now. Um, and that's the result of a third down and four from Vanderbilt. So they get a stop, despite the fact that Florida really has a wide open receiver very early in the route combo. We talked on the podcast at length last week about Florida special teams and how we tend not to try to change the game with special teams. This is an auto call by Florida if they get this look where essentially a team is going to overload one side like this and allow Florida to have the numbers, which you're going to see. Football is all about numbers. Vanderbilt's going to have two. Florida's going to have four, right? And you're going to take this all day, every single day. You should be able to pick this up every single time. If a team does this to you, you should have the auto call, especially where you have a punter who can run, which Florida has one. You just want to take this every single time. Vanderbilt does it. Mistakes are made by them. We're off to the races. Good wheels. Clean running from the Australian rules football. And a nice huge gain from Florida. A timely pickup. Game was 21-0. It probably should have been 21-13. A nice call there on special teams. Again, it's a layup. It's an autopilot. That's a bunny. Uh, but you'll take it. First and 10 for Florida. We're going to see another A-gap win here for Vanderbilt. He's going to basically just give a little wiggle here to Reese and beat him into the A-gap, which is going to end this play for Florida. There's your read from Emery. Emery does not have a read. Defensive Ed stayed home setting the edge. This must be a handoff, which is what's happening here. Reese is beat. There's Reese beat in the gap. Aggressive play by the linebacker. And now this play is dead. And down goes Pierce. So again, if teams are going to be this aggressive this aggressive playing against the run, right? Florida's RPO game could really get untracked. You'd love to see Rick Wells here running this kind of route. Uh, you could run double slants. You could run a million things when teams are playing this far off of you. Florida's just not at the point yet where they're going to pass the ball every single time, even if Vanderbilt says you should pass the ball every single time. We really praised Dan Mullen and crew last year for how often they pass the football, not just because I love passing the football. Actually, I love numbers football more. 
In fact, no matter how much I'm a fan of, of good passing concepts, if a team wants to line up and they run the ball every single time, I will run it every single time. I think good offense needs to be dictated by what the defense is doing. And if they are giving you favorable numbers to pass the football, pass it every single time. And if they change those numbers to where they want you to run, run the ball. Maximize your play given what the defense is doing. In this case, again, Vanderbilt did a nice job selling out to stop the run, and they occasionally won on it, as we see here. We talked last week about the clap snap and about how Florida likes to use that as their cadence. Of course, Florida's at home. Let's focus on Emory. We talked about how you can use the clap snap to actually change the cadence, so you don't always have to do two claps. The standard for Florida, here comes your clapping. One, two. Okay, now we're going after two. This is the key, right? So we're going to go, we're going backwards. One snap, two snaps, and we're going after two, but Stuart Reese forgets that for a second and takes off on the normal cadence, and it's a false start. So, of course, Florida worked on this all week. They false started much less. Uh, but if you're going to use the clap cadence, you can't just always go on two, like we talked about, or one, or whatever your team's call is. You have to alter it so teams can't jump the snap on you. And sometimes, no matter what kind of silent count, snap count, leg lift you want to use, uh, you're going to wind up getting players jumping if you have any kind of cadence at all. So again, unless you're just going to have the center snap it at some point in time where everyone watches the ball, um, that's the safest way to go. You lose an advantage. If you want to have the advantage of having your players fire off the ball, whether it's going to be, you know, a Peyton Manning, Omaha, 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 Set Hut, you know, and it could be on Hut Hut or Hut Hut Hut. Uh, Florida likes to use the clap cadence, as do most college teams, and you can change that up, but you got to get it right. So Florida falls victim here to a false start by Stuart Reese. So one thing you never, ever want to do as a quarterback is take your eyes away from downfield. Do not look at the rush at any given time. Emory takes the snap. He's going to look to his right. He wants to hit, presumably, something to his right, but... He decides to move his feet. Again, this is not part of the play here. The play is not for him to go reset his feet like this, right? He's just looking here first, decides he doesn't like what he sees, and because Emery's not a guy who wants to stay calm with his feet in the pocket, his footwork is not clean back here. He's not flipping through his progressions. He basically just wants to escape and thinks, maybe I can run. I like running. I want to run. And then kind of resets, and then he's going to check his go route here. And I don't like that either. And now his eyes go here to the lineman. Now, instead, if he's scanning the field, what he's going to find is that Frazier's is wide open. There he is. Take a look at him. He's wide open. No one's there. Your go route has taken him off the screen. This is where the ball should go. Instead, he's looked down. He looked down. Now he's lost all sight of everything. This is all blind him. He has no idea what's happening. He's going to pick his eyes back up. This is when quarterbacks tend to throw interceptions. Picks his eyes back up. Now he's not really sure what's going to happen. Now he's going to make the right decision. Once all that's happened, just run. Because that's going to minimize the damage you could do to yourself. Unfortunately, because, because all of this stuff happens, he leaves the pocket, which he shouldn't. He resets here. He looks at the defensive end. He then goes out again. He's going to get a holding call here. Now this is hard to attribute this on DeLance. Right, I'm the first person to talk about when Delance struggled in pass pro. On this one, this is brutal for an offensive lineman. That's not where Emory's supposed to be. There's absolutely no pressure, no threat whatsoever. Emory needs to work in between his tackles here. Take a look at this protection. Look at this. There is no threat here. He should be sitting right here where he could have scanned, scanned. He could have worked his way across the field to where he would have found this right here on second and 16 for an easy completion. He's just not there yet with his footwork and technique. And the reason, again, each week I come on here and I kind of go in detail onto these things, is when you see things like these, it's extremely unlikely that someone's just going to fix these things. There's a whole lot of things going wrong with the footwork, the mentality, what happens in the backfield that just don't get corrected overnight. Um, so some new stuff we see on film here, again, with what Florida's running that I'm pointing out. Uh, but second and 16 turns into a holding call and an even further down in distance for Florida on the next play, which is going to be a good one. All right, second and 26. If you guessed that Vanderbilt was going to play a cover two and they weren't going to care about the middle of the field because they didn't care about the middle of the field all day long, then you win. You are correct. And that means what Florida should do is have a running back, in this case, Pierce, 
attack a linebacker and have Emory Jones fake the run because that's a great idea. It is a great idea. It's a perfect idea every single time something like this happens. In cover two, the weaknesses are going to be the deep middle. Uh, they're also going to wind up being the sideline here on the edges. Uh, those are your weak spots there with the cover two. And in this particular case, we're going to hit the middle. The middle is the best place to go. That's really where you want to go to the cover two if possible. And that is what you call wide open. Emery's going to deliver this ball exactly on time. Check mark for that. Pierce his head around as soon as he clears. Check mark on that. Everything looks good. We're still going to throw a hitch route here. Thankfully, this time he doesn't turn all the way around. And because he only has to turn halfway around, it's going to give him a chance to finish this one where Naquan Wright couldn't. And he gets up on his horse there and he does still finish this. So again, ball placement's not where you want it to be on this one, but it's better than the Naquan Wright one and that allows Pierce to win the foot race to the end zone. So second and 26 becomes a touchdown. Nice, easy play call from Florida. Again, Vanderbilt's recklessness or aggressiveness or that's surprising given that Florida likes to throw the ball to running backs there that they would choose to cover that the way they did. But Florida takes advantage of it. Nice job by Dan Mullen. Again, calling an excellent play, recognizing how Vanderbilt wants to play, giving Emory a high percentage first read option. Emory executes, completes the pass, and that leads to a touchdown for Florida. 28-0 Florida, but Vanderbilt's undeterred. They're not going to leave their game plan. They're still not going to have a single high safety um, sitting deep, or they're not going to play a cover three where they sit a guy deep in deep thirds. They're going to allow Florida to attack that deep middle, and they're going to attack it with Copeland, who's going to run a nice post route and give himself tons of leverage on the corner. Who's going to wind up being behind him, and he's going to basically have the entire field for Emory to throw him this football. Emory takes his drop back accordingly, sets the right foot. Ball's still a little late. There's the classic lean back. Lean back. Lean back. You'd rather drive this forward. There it is. Emory has a strong arm, even leaning back. Obviously, he's going to put plenty of velocity on the ball, but that's going to be a big hitch route. Now, what you can't see again on this TV breakthrough is that Copeland actually was three full yards ahead. And if this ball is put out here where it should be, that's a touchdown. Nice completion. Look, we're taking completions. I'm never going to complain about a completion, but film review is about doing it right, doing it perfectly. It's a nice big hitch route. Copeland gets a nice big gain. Uh, better ball placement there would have been a touchdown. All right, very next play. If one hitch is good, two hitches are better. Vanderbilt again, first and 10. They really don't care. They're like, look, just keep throwing the football on us. We don't care. And Dan and obliges because they're bringing everybody again. Everyone's coming. And here comes, again, it's a play action. It's not an RPO. This is going to be a pass the whole way. So we're just going to call it a play action. Woodamore here is going to be on the quick slant and the hitch route here from... Copeland, let's take the hitch. That's the right throw. It's a better throw here because he has more space, right? Less space here, more space here. Good throw. First reads Cope. It's a hitch route. Emery throws the hitch route. Nice. Look, great hitch. Boom. We're ready. Look at this. Ready? There he is. He's face mask facing him, chest facing Emery. Love those throws for Emery. And Copeland makes a guy miss, makes another guy miss, keeps on going. Touchdown for Copeland. Nice work from him. Again, he has become a very dependable receiver for Florida. He's basically eliminated any of the drop seeds that he had had in previous seasons, which is great on him and a nice productive game from him as well. First and 10, it's time for Vanderbilt to play some cover three. It's been too long. They need to do it. Bailing corner, bailing corner, bailing middle safety, cover three. Florida's got an exact right play dialed up, especially for Emory. You could run four verticals if you felt like your quarterback was a vertical throw and you wanted that. Let's run four verticals for a touchdown. But with Emory, let's run hitches. Again, great call. Little easy flat route here from Zipperer. We're going to have a hitch, and then we're going to have a hitch. Now, this hitch should go to Frazier's because he's wide open. Check out all the grass here in the middle. Emory's first read, though, is not Frazier's. It's Rick Wells, and he's just looking at Rick Wells. Again, he's staring at him, actually. Uh, this ball really comes to Frazier's, but he's staring at Wells. He's going to hit Wells in a much tighter window than where Frazier's is. And again, here's Frazier's. He is really wide open. He's going to get this one into this window because Emery is a good hitch thrower. Look, he's a good stationary target thrower. Look at that. Right in his chest, right on time. That is without a doubt his best throw. And that's why when you see Dan Mullen attacking and cover three with Emery Jones, a lot of them are hitch routes. That's smart coaching. I said it before on the podcast. If you're going to go with Emery, if he's your guy and you're Dan Mullen, Featuring a lot of hitch routes is exactly what you want to do. And then I'd put the film on for Emory here and say, hey, look, I'm glad you completed this ball. You threw it on time. A nice throw right to his chest. 
let's go that next step and hit the more likely and more open receiver, which is going to lead to even more completions. All right, we didn't see the speed option a lot in this game, but Emery runs this very well. I've said it before, he runs it really well. In fact, I think if he had played in a different era, he might have been a solid triple option quarterback, perhaps for Nebraska. And this is really solid. And we talked about this earlier in the year, and I think he's gotten better at it. He was a little slower before to just attack this defender. He does this perfectly. You take the snap, you attack this defender, you get him to commit all the way to you, and then make a nice pitch. Commit, commit, there it is. He knows he's committed now. Nice eye awareness. Make sure the pitch comes out here cleanly. And it does. And there's Rick Wells. And there's Florida, which, oh, so close to a touchdown, but he stepped out of bounds. But either way, one more time. This is really, really nice from memory. You're going to take this snap. Let's fake the handoff. We're out. We're running the speed option. Attack the defender. Attack, pitch. That defender's out of the play. On time. Almost touchdown for Rick Wells, but really, really nice work by Emery there. Second and nine, and Vandy is going to flip the script on Emery Jones leading to a pick. So we've we've shown you time and time again how every single time Florida fakes the handoff, Vanderbilt's just coming. Boom, they're coming, right? They are coming every single time. Well, on this particular play, they are not coming. In fact, they are waiting for this throw. Now, Emery has already committed that he is making this throw to Shorter, and he does not care what happens because clearly this is not when you want to make this throw. He's going to try it anyway. It's pretty ballsy. I'll give him that. And that's going to get tipped, and it's going to get picked off. Now, pre-snap, what could we have done better here? Well, pre-snap, first things first, take a look up top of your screen. Look at the cushion that you have here, right? Vanderbilt is now playing an actual traditional middle high safety. Pre-snap read would be this is cover three. You'd expect him to be soft, giving you an underneath route. You'd expect something similar here. And then you would read it out accordingly. So pre-snap wise, you count your numbers. Okay, well, I've got one, two, three, four. So I'm equal numbers over here. I'm four on four. And I've got one on one up here. This is my conflict defender. He can either come in or he can go out. If he goes out, he takes that right away from me. If he comes in, he's playing run. But right now, he's closer to me than he is to my receiver. If my receiver's on a curl, I probably like that option. Simple throw, one on one. Not nearly as much traffic as I have here on the boundary side of the field. That's the pre-snap read. I'm going to take my snap. I'm going to snap my head around. I immediately confirm I'm in cover three. Boom. Heads up. And I have this hitch. There you go. Right? So again, that's something Dan Mullen, I'm sure, is working with Emory on as well as your pre-snap reading. Where do you want to go in the field? Half the battle of quarterbacking is getting your pre-snap reads correct. If you get that correct, then your life is much, much easier. If Emory's pre-snap read was that he was going to hit this hitch because they were going to send their linebackers and he's wrong, now he's in trouble because he really has no other plan, right? And that's what's tricky about playing quarterback is it's so much decision-making. Now, once this is dead, and Emory's done a much better of job of this as the season's gone on, is not throwing this pass. This play's dead. They got you. You just run. Just go ahead. Just run up here. Just kill this. It's dead. Or, or... If you look over here and you feel like this defender's not coming downhill on you, of course, you can still throw this hitch, but you got to be careful because that's now a very late throw. And a good defender is going to bait you into that and take that to the house, right? So most likely here, your play is dead. You can attempt to kind of buy some time. In this case, hit Whittemore as your check down and live to fight another day or just take it yourself here and escape. Instead, he compounds his problems, fires this ball out, and Vandy gets the pick. Third and 15 for Florida here late in the third quarter. Florida up 42 nothing. Emory Jones in the game. This is a great pass by Emory here. A really nice throw on the dig route. Florida's going to get Rick Wells running an outside release, really just a clearance go. And then, then you're going to have Henderson running just a dig right here at the sticks. And the ball's going to be thrown at the exact right time in the exact right place. Top of your screen. Right foot hits the ground. Emery should be ready to throw. Again, his, his his drop steps off of his shotgun is just a little off. Ideally, you want your quarterback to take this, and when his right foot hits the ground, he's not so stationary waiting. And you can see this causes him to just always have his timing a little bit off. He's going to make up for it here with this throw, but again, the timing's a little off there for the depth of what his receivers are running. He's going to throw the lean back. There he is, always leaning backwards, leaning backwards, right? But he is going to throw a perfect pass here regardless. 
This ball hits him right in the hands, right in the hands. Again, it's too fuzzy on my screen for you to see it, but it's right in the hands, and Henderson just drops it. That's a nice ball. Got to have a catch. If you're in the NFL, of course, and you want this to be even better, you want Emery to step into this throw and put it a little bit further. This ball could be here, but that's going to be tough. you got to throw it over the linebacker that you see here. I have no problem with the throw Emery makes here. This ball hits him right in the hands. This is like 98% good despite the technique. You have to make this catch here if you're Xavier Henderson. He does not make the catch. That's a nice ball from Emery on third and 15. Very hard down and distance to convert. Good protection from the O-line. Ball was thrown more or less on time in a place where Xavier Henderson could catch it. And again, that's something Emery does throw well. If he can see your face mask and he can see your jersey number, he can make a nice accurate throw. All right, last play of the offensive breakdown. It is third and five. There's 8.45 left in the fourth, and Anthony Richardson is your quarterback. All of his fourth down touches, for the most part, were really just runs and handoffs. If you are a conspiracy theorist, you think that Dan Mullen is doing this because he is trying to make Anthony Richardson look less good relative to Emory Jones, and therefore there's less of a quarterback controversy. I, for one, think it's just really difficult, if not impossible, to understand what Dan Mullen does with his quarterback personnel choices. You just don't know. I don't know what the rhyme or reason is, but in this case, it certainly would have made a lot more sense to have Anthony Richardson throwing the football so we could see what he's made of. We could see what his issues are, where his strengths are. We could let him learn, get some good, valuable game rep experience against an opponent that's not his own team. But I'm not the coach. I'm just your film analyst. So I'm going to break down what happens. In this case, when teams play Anthony Richardson, as we often see versus Emery, even at this stage of the game, they sit much deeper. That's something teams do in this case. Their linebackers are even starting at a deeper depth, and they're not just barreling in right away. Why? Because I think teams do think that Richardson is obviously the quarterback more likely to beat them deep. This should allow Richardson to run the football better. However, as we're going to see on this play... When it's the quarterback draw and it's third and five, you're going to have to not have a wide open gap for someone to come through, which is exactly what Vanderbilt does. And they're going to come right through what used to be the A gap here. And that's a tall order. If you have an unblocked linebacker shooting through the A gap as Richardson begins his running, and then you also have your defensive end out here holding the edge, I don't know where you're going to go. I mean, he's a sensational athlete. Really no chance of success there for Richardson. So I've seen a lot of people make comments like, well, he had success against inferior opponents or he's struggling to throw or this, that, and the other. I think what the film shows is exactly what it shows is so far it's a very small sample size. We've seen some really promising things with how he passes the football. We haven't seen enough to make a definitive judgment one way or the other. Uh, but to look at any one of these games and say that he's inadequate, I think would be would be wholly false based upon what we've seen. And I don't have any answers for why he's used the way that he is and why Florida tends to want to not let him throw the football, especially in a game like this one. I have no answers for you on that. Only time will tell what the Anthony Richardson story at Florida will be like. For now, I'll continue to break down whatever I see on film each week, whatever looks the most interesting or what looks new, uh, I will bring that to you. As always, thanks so much for watching these videos, for subscribing to the channel, and for tuning in each week. I certainly appreciate it. I'm James from the Gator Nation Football Podcast.